Welcome. This is part one of episode number seven in our Kingdom of God series. This video will be a recap of all the previous episodes. And if you haven't seen them yet, it's a good idea to watch them before you watch this one. A link to the episode's playlist is in the description. My name is Debbie Galino and I'm a songwriter for King Jesus. It's my passion that everyone understands what the kingdom of God is, what it is, and how it affects them personally. As I've been saying all along, the kingdom of God is where the human race is headed. This video is formatted for the blind and visually impaired, and all the captions are in large text, and an outline of the visuals is in the video description. So let's jump into the recap. Episode number one was an overview of the kingdom of God. And from the very beginning of the Bible, God explains who he is and what his kingdom is like. Right now, the kingdom of God is fully operational in heaven. And according to the Lord's Prayer, God is bringing his perfect will to the earth. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. God's perfect will is done through humans, through you and I. And the entire Bible explains exactly how God is building his kingdom on earth. He's building it gradually. It's a process. And God is using the earthly dimensions of time and space to do it. But it's not finished yet. To describe God's ongoing building process, Bible teachers like to say, the kingdom of God is already, but not yet. Episode number two was about Satan and Adam and Eve's decision to disobey the one rule God gave them. And we discussed the fact that Satan is real. He's not a fictitious character, as some say he is. God is perfect, holy, and righteous. And apparently in the beginning, we were very similar, since the Bible says that God made us in his own image. But when Adam and Eve disobeyed God and ate the fruit from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, they suddenly lost their perfection, their holiness, and their righteousness. They were unfit to be in the presence of a holy God, so much so that God kicked them out of the beautiful Garden of Eden. But before he did, he provided a way to redeem them back to himself. He killed some animals and used their skins to cover Adam and Eve's nakedness. And in the first five books of the Bible, we see that animal sacrifice became the way of redemption between Yahweh and his people for thousands of years. Then in the New Testament, Jesus, the Son of God, died on a cross and sacrificed his own life as a redemption for our disobedience. His sacrifice brought an end to the need for animal sacrifice forever. Episode number three was about the nation of Israel. Part of God's process in creating his kingdom on earth was to create a nation of people that he could reveal himself to. Through Moses, God explained that there is only one God in the universe and that when humans worship him, he's able to bless them abundantly. And God designated the nation of Israel to reveal this to the rest of the world. And in addition, God strategically placed this nation at the crossroads of major international trade routes. These trade routes were used by caravans from the Asian, European, and African continents. The caravans had no choice but to pass through the land of Israel on their way to their destination. Israel was a land bridge between those three continents. And God knew that in this way, knowledge and information about him could be broadcast to the rest of the world. In addition, when Jesus returns to earth, he will return to Jerusalem to rule from King David's throne. And in the future, Jerusalem, and therefore Israel, will be the epicenter of the world. Episode number four is about the Messiah. The concept of a Messiah is found in Islam and Christianity, but it began with the Jews. God promised Israel that one day he would send them a prophet, a mighty leader just like Moses. That leader would be anointed by God's Holy Spirit and would deliver Israel from its enemies. The word Messiah is from the English language. It's derived from the Hebrew word Mashiach, which means anointed one. The Greek word for Messiah is Christos, and the Latin word is Christ. That's why Jesus is called Jesus Christ. Christ is a title, not a name. Really, we should call him Jesus the Christ, which means Jesus the Messiah. Many Old Testament prophets describe the coming Jewish Messiah. 
They said he would be a Jew from the tribe of Judah. They said he would be a direct descendant of King David. And they said he would be born in Bethlehem and that he would enter Jerusalem on a donkey's colt and that he would be buried in a rich man's tomb. In Isaiah chapter 35, verses 5 and 6, Isaiah prophesied this about the coming Messiah. And when he comes, he will open the eyes of the blind and unstop the ears of the deaf. The lame will leap like a deer, and those who cannot speak will shout and sing. All these prophecies, and many more that I haven't mentioned, were completely fulfilled by Jesus. And the odds of one man fulfilling these prophecies is 10 to the 17th power. That's a one followed by 17 zeros. When I heard this statistic, it was one of the main reasons that I decided to give my life to Jesus and to Jesus only. In episode number four, we also discussed false prophets. There have been many men throughout history who have claimed that they were Jesus. And there are even several alive today, ones in Russia, ones in the Philippines, and there's one in New Zealand. But Jesus made it clear what his return to earth would look like, and it certainly hasn't happened yet. And you can find this description of his return in Matthew chapter 24 and also in Luke chapter 21. Episode number five is about King Jesus. When Jesus returns, he will be the king over the entire earth. But he will be unlike any king we've ever known. When we talked about his qualities, that Jesus is God, that he created the world, that he has supernatural power over all the natural world, and that he will rule with absolute justice and righteousness, and that he died in our place to pay our debt penalty of sin, and that he saved us from an eternal separation from God. No earthly king has ever demonstrated these qualities. It's, it's almost impossible to imagine. Episode number six is about the Holy Spirit. Jesus taught us about God the Father, Jesus the Son of God, and the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God. In the Old Testament, only a few people were filled with God's Holy Spirit. People like Moses, King David, and many of the prophets, Elijah, Elisha, Isaiah, and Daniel, to name just a few. But in the New Testament, in God's new covenant, Jesus made it possible through his death and resurrection for all humans who believe in him to have God's Holy Spirit living inside them. In the Gospel of John, chapters 14, 15, and 16 give us much of what Jesus taught us about the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is God's Spirit living inside a person. And the only way the Holy Spirit can live inside someone is when that person receives the free gift of salvation offered by Jesus. And as soon as a person accepts and receives this free gift into their heart, they receive the Holy Spirit. They are born into God's spiritual kingdom. Our first birth is physical and our second birth is spiritual. That's why it's called being born again. We also talked about the transforming power of the Holy Spirit. I shared from my life as well as the lives of others. And Christianity is the only faith tradition where God lives inside a person. God is the most powerful and knowledgeable being in the universe. I love the fact that he lives inside me. I can't imagine living without him. So when you step back and you think about everything that we've just discussed, you can see how rich and powerful the kingdom of God is. And through Jesus, the Holy Spirit, and the Bible, God has given us so many gifts. In the next video, which will be the last video in the series, we'll talk about Christ's return and how he'll be the king over God's kingdom on earth. For now, enjoy this song. It's called The Gifts. A description of the image behind the lyrics is in the video description.
Don't forget, no one can live in God's future kingdom on earth unless they're born again and have a personal relationship with Jesus. If you're not sure if you're born again and if you want to have a personal relationship with Jesus, click on the video link in the description. I'll walk you through exactly how to do that. The video is short and it's to the point. So if you feel the Lord is tugging on your heart right now to do that, don't put it off. None of us are guaranteed to be alive tomorrow. Securing your future with God can only be done while you're alive right now. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you're new to the channel, make sure to subscribe so we can notify you when the last video in this series is posted. And you can listen to all my music on Spotify, Amazon, and almost every music streaming platform. Each time you listen, this ministry receives a small amount of money, and every penny goes to supporting our work. And if you'd like to donate to our ministry, click the link in the description. A donation of any amount will add to our ability to create songs and content about Jesus. So make sure to share this video on your social media. God wants everyone to be with him in his future kingdom on earth. And until next time, may God bless you and keep you.